we went to see some property this Saturday. Um, a lot of good properties out there, man, in this this particular area that we were in. Um, so, if you if you don't mind, I, I'd love if you, if you have an opening or, or we're willing to let me give you a tour of property in the area. Let me know. I'd be I'd love to come by, tag along if you don't mind. It's up, I don't want to interfere, but that no, that'd be cool. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, we basically what we did is we just got together this Saturday. And, uh, you know, we had a property that we wanted to go take a look at. So we just showed up at the property and, you know, did a quick video, did a, a, a walkthrough of, uh, of the property. Mm -hmm. And just the area is awesome. I mean, there's a lot going on around there. So we definitely want to look further. And, and now we got some uh, information. So we want to go ahead and try to hold on. Let me do this real quick. Yeah, we want to make sure that uh, we reach out to the sellers and see if we can get the sellers, um, you know, possibly to sell to us. So that's the idea, you know? Yep. I'm doing David uh, Monroe's uh, partnering uh, underwriting class. Right now, it's pretty cool. We're learning a lot. Did he send you the email of the property that, we, that we're that uh, we raising capital for? Yeah, the one that's the one at San Antonio. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. He's, he sent it to me too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I know. It's funny. Yeah. Yep. So, I'm, so yeah, I'm me, to... me and my partner. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say me and my partner, we're looking to, um, we're looking to talk to him too. So we'll probably schedule an appointment with David. Okay. I got some more people coming in. All right. Uh, no problem. Uh, yeah. So, we got some uh, appointments. Uh, we're going to try to schedule an appointment with David and kind of, you know, talk to him about the deal a little bit further and, and um, you know, kind of like see his opinion on the deal and everything else. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody's trickling in now. Not no problem. Uh, welcome, Rocky. Hey, Carlos. Hey, buddy. Uh, all right. Let's see who else is here today. Oh, this is this is Johnson, Johnson Jimison, JJ. I, I spoke with you uh, last time. I'm yeah, I remember, I remember, but I was we're, we're just trying to remember because yeah. uh, I remember it was another name uh, than than what was on here. Yeah. How you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? Are we meeting tonight? Yes, yes, we're definitely meeting tonight. Uh, it looks like we might have a smaller group than usual, but we're definitely. Uh, I got a lot of good material for you guys. Uh, hopefully, it'll be helpful to you guys. Okay. No, sounds good. I'm trying to get you on the computer. I have you on my phone. That's why it says Nick and Gabby. I'm trying to get you on my um, laptop. So I'm going to keep trying to connect. <laughs> as long as you keep trying, eventually you'll succeed. All right. All right. And uh, so, yeah, what we're going to do is, you know, it's uh, about eight minutes in here. So might as well get started. Um, Brock and I were talking about Basically, uh, on Saturday, my partner, uh, Parth Delakia and myself, uh, we were walking some units, uh, taking a look at some property here in Atlanta proper. And basically, you know, we're trying to reach out to the sellers. Um, we did have appointments to see one of those properties that we, uh, we toured. And we're trying to reach out to the sellers of everybody else that was in the area. Because the area apparently, uh, it looks like a, an emerging market. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of new construction going on. Uh, there's a lot of um, different types of, of buildings coming up. So uh, we got some retail coming up. And we definitely have some more apartment buildings that are coming up. And uh, some properties that could still use some work, some Class C property. Uh, so we're really excited to reach out to the sellers and... And hopefully we could be uh, talking about a new deal uh, coming up soon where we're going to be in control of this deal. So I uh, look forward to that. That's really exciting. And, um, you know, that we're, we're really trying to do as much as we can to get the word out there to the brokers and to the sellers. And we're trying to take down some deals. So we're super excited about this uh, joint venture that we have going on. So what I'd like to do is, if you guys would... I know Brock, he's uh, he's out and about, so he's not going to be able to, but maybe uh, uh, either Rocky or JJ, if you guys would just tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you got going on uh, in the multifamily space. And, uh, you know, if you don't have anything right now, just kind of tell us a little bit more about you and, and your aspirations, if you will. 
Okay. Well, yeah, this, this is JJ. Um, right now I'm, I'm looking to purchase. Um, that was my goal for, for this year. I joined a mastermind. I hired a coach. Um, and basically he told me to, to just build my balance sheet. So I'm looking at a, I'm looking to build my balance sheet. I wanted to get it at least 20 doors, but I'm going to start with a fourplex. I'm going to look at a fourplex, uh, and possibly do an Airbnb with it. Um, it's not in the local market. It's in Louisiana. So, um, I have family members there. So we're looking at that just to start building, uh, building my balance sheet. But eventually I'd like to get to at least, you know, a hundred doors within the next, within the next six to, to 12 months. Um, I mean, I have, I have the the funds. I have partners that's willing to JV. It's just finding the finding a property where the numbers, uh, of course, uh, pencil out. Yeah, that sounds really great. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I mean, we could definitely help you get there quicker. I'll tell you because one of the things that we we come across often are deals that are not exactly what we're looking for. So it would be, um, you know, fifty units or less. Um, okay. So in that case, you know, if we come across something here in Georgia, uh, we could definitely run it by you. And, and if you're interested, uh, hopefully that'll help you get to your reach your goals sooner. Yeah, ab absolutely. I can put, let me see if I can, um, I'm going to say, I, I, I'm looking for the, um, I guess where I could put in the chat, I'll just put my, my Gmail account in there and, um, yeah, and you can have my contact information in the or text it to me at this number, the 404-345-4514. I'll put all that in the chat. So if you come across something, um, definitely run it by me. And I'm, I'm open because I'm looking to try to make an acquisition, I, hopefully before the end of the year, which gives me a couple of weeks. Right on. All right. And thanks for that. And then Rocky, if you would, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, new to the real estate game, uh, about three months in, just been uh, laying down network base and, and getting the education I needed. Um, transitioning to the acquisition side as well. Um, <clears throat> been an underwriting decent amount of deals and, um, you know, looking both in Ohio and uh, the Georgia markets, um, uh, you know, looking at a couple right now, also, um, working on a shared housing model, uh, you know, uh, that's separate from apartments, obviously, but I am uh, <clears throat> still pretty um, active in the apartment game, um, was analyzing a deal earlier. So <laughs> um, also looking for kind of that 50 and below, um, especially in the Atlanta area. So Carlos, if you see anything, um, feel free to send it my way as well. Um, so. Yeah, that sounds great, Rocky. And yeah, you guys definitely go ahead and put your information here in the uh, chat box. Um, and then what I'll go ahead and do, and I'll do that as well, is put my information here. You guys can reach out to me directly. Uh, you'll have my contact information toward the end as well. Uh, I know that most of you who are on the call today, you guys have my information, but just to make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and post uh, my email address and my easiest way to reach me would be my cell number. And um, yeah, because there's definitely a lot of opportunities in the area, guys. So, um, you know, like I always say, try to keep in contact, uh, stay top of mind with, with the investors, with myself, um, you know, people in the area. I know, Rocky, you were reaching out about uh, meeting in person. Uh, that definitely sounds great. Lately, you know, with the holidays, it's been kind of tough to, to uh, set aside some time, but um, you definitely have my calendar invite. Uh, please feel free to jump on there. And whatever day you find on there, I'll make sure to make the time and, and join you for uh, an in-person meetup. And, uh, and then I'm also going to try to do uh, one of the things we're squaring away uh, for the new year um, is going to be to meet in person. Uh, so we're going to try to do one meetup um, virtually like this one and one in person. And we're going to try to do two meetups per month. Uh, the one in person is probably going to be on Saturdays. Uh, right now, I think it's the time that's working out best for most of us. Um, but we're definitely going to be doing that. Uh, Brock, if you could um, go ahead and, and give us a little bit about you. If not, don't worry. I understand you're driving. Um, so if you don't unmute, then I'll, I'll just take that as you, you can't right now. And then 
we'll, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and jump uh, straight into the content. So bear with me for a second. Brock, you want to go ahead? Yep. This, uh, this is Brock. I am uh, LP in four different deals right now. And I actually have one going full cycle actually this week, which is pretty cool. It's, I'm 1031 exchanging it into another property uh, in an IRA. So that's pretty cool. And I'll have another one hopefully in quarter one, maybe going full cycle as well. And that's a cash deal. So that'd be kind of nice to have that as well. And I'm just learning as much as I can, uh, trying to refine kind of my approach, what I'm looking for, target area, probably uh, under 50 units as well. Uh, and I might even go with an eight plex if I can find something in the Ackworth area, Kennesaw area, just to get, uh, as you mentioned before, you get your balance sheet built up. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Just trying to, and I'm actually part of a, uh, uh, strategic partners, David Monroe, I've joined his group as a mentorship group and I'm going through classes of underwriting and searching markets and things right now. Awesome. And if you guys don't know, uh, he just mentioned Dave, David Monroe. Uh, he's basically a CCIM instructor. He talks about, and by the way, thanks, Brock. Uh, he talks about um, uh, analyzing the markets. Um, great guy. He's been super helpful with, with me and my partner. Um, he's basically has a strategic partnership group. Um, I highly recommend him. He's a straight shooter, great guy, super helpful, goes out of his way to help people out. And, uh, he knows that I, I speak his praises because when you find good people, uh, you definitely want to make sure to let the world know about them. Um, and you know, Brock started, uh, with, with, um, with David and I have a few other, um, investor friends of mine that are also uh, tied with him. And basically, um, you know, they're, they're on this deal that we're raising capital on and at least two other guys are on his mastermind. So I highly recommend David Monroe. And I was gonna say also, it'll come back to me, it just slipped my mind, but there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. Um, not necessarily this, this deal that we're working on, but uh, for right now, let's just go ahead. Oh, yeah, Brock, if you want to, if you could tell me your info, and if you'd like, I could uh, type your information here for you, since I know you're not accessible uh, right now. But if not, no worries. Just, you know, definitely uh, send it to me if you want me to share it. And then when I do send out an email, I'll go ahead and share uh, your contact info as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the content, guys. So thank you uh, for your patience today. And thank you guys again for showing up. Uh, you know, this is Multifamily Investor Nation, Monday meetups, uh, multifamily meetups. There's a hundred places you could be, uh, but I'm glad you're here with us. So thank you for that. Uh -huh. So close this. Quick, quick question. Do you have David Monroe's uh, contact information? I could definitely shoot it to you uh, for sure. Okay. And if you would too, when you reach out to him, let him know that I referred you. I am an affiliate for him, so I could definitely get a little kickback. But more than anything, I want him to know that, you know, that I'm singing his praises and that I'm definitely referring people to him because as of now, I've sent him at least four or five people. So for sure, I'll definitely get that to you uh, within an email. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's jump into the content here. All right, I'm going to be brief with my introduction. You guys by now have seen me before, know about me. Uh, I consider most of you guys friends. So thank you so much for joining us today. Again, this is Multifamily Investor Nation, Multifamily Meetups. Uh, today's topic is going to be on asset management responsibilities after closing a multifamily deal. Um, let me just get a quick sip of my Yogi tea over here for a second. Oh, that's better. All right. And um, so this actually uh, is a continuation, if you will, from last month. You guys remember we're talking about property management and we uh, discussed the, the documents that you're going to need to get from your property managers. Uh, so if you weren't here last time, definitely go check out my YouTube channel and you could uh, catch the replay. Excuse me. Um, Last time I also mentioned to you guys, um, you know, that we had a deal going on. So, you know, basically, you know, okay, back, back, back off a little bit, uh, back down a little bit here. Uh, let's go back and re restrate, retrace our steps here for a second. So basically, who am I and why am I here? My name is Carlos Di Reynoso. I'm the co-organizer for Multifamily Investor Nation. 
I'm the founder and CEO of Candice Major Investment Capital, LLC. I'm the managing partner, a general partner, and a capital raiser for, again, this equity, uh, this deal that I'm an equity partner on. It's basically a 240 unit, uh, 506B in San Antonio, Texas. I'm also the author of the book, Selling Secrets You Can't Afford to Miss. And like I told you guys last time, I was going to be on the Joe Fairless, the best real estate investing advice ever podcast. And I was interviewed uh, right here. You have a picture of me and Ash Patel. Uh, Ash was interviewing me on the show. This was a lot of fun, you guys. If you ever have the opportunity to show up um, and be interviewed, I definitely highly recommend it. These guys are top-notch interviewers. The questions, you know, some of the questions uh, they gave me were uh, for the lightning round. All the other questions were basically on the spot and they're very natural, um, great questions. And really it was a lot of fun. We were laughing most of the time. Uh, it's funny, we only had to do one extra take and that's because we were laughing so hard that Ash uh, forgot it, uh, the question he was going to ask me, but uh, eventually he caught up with the question and we had a lot of fun. Um, so here's another uh, picture. Basically, if you can see here, uh, you'll see me in the middle bottom and you'll see Michael Blanc right above me to my right. And, you know, Travis uh, uh, Witt, uh, Watts was here as well. And, uh, you know, these are basically all the episodes from this previous week. Uh, it was a lot of fun for sure. And my topic uh, happened to be on five tips to boost your online network and find investors with yours truly, Carlos Di Reynoso. So yeah, that was definitely a lot of fun. Um, you know, and, and it's funny because like I was telling Ash, a lot of times, if you want to grow your network, you got to get out there. You guys hear me say this on the show all the time. You got to get out there. You got to be at conferences meetups, summits. Uh, and that brings me to my next point, which is the next meetup is coming up on January 20th through the 22nd. As you can see here, I'm going to be a guest speaker. Um, basically, I'm going to be on the panel for raising capital. And uh, so far, we have four guests already announced that are going to be on that panel with me. And uh, there's a lot of great people on here. Uh, I don't want to throw out the names just yet. But to get more information, you definitely want to go to mfinsummit.com. I uh, use my promo code Canis. You can see it up here if you could see my cursor, C-A-N-I-S, as in Canis Major Investment Capital, my investment firm. Excuse me. And you'll save $100 off the price of admission. Excuse me. But just so you guys know, so far we have over 800 people showing up that have already signed up to the conference. Um, I would say about 600 of these people are professional investors that have been doing this for a while that love to share their information with you. So I would definitely highly recommend you guys uh, check us out. It's the 20th through the 22nd of January. If you can't make it, still register and you'll go ahead, they'll send you the replay uh, and you'll also have access to previous replays as well. All right, uh, as far as announcements are concerned, uh, make sure you sign in. Uh, you guys have already done so, but uh, with your email, phone number, and um, any contact information you'd like to share. If you have a business, by all means, you know, share it here. Uh, it's an easy, free promotion, if you will. Um, and it'll also be seen, if you wanted to, it could also be seen in my YouTube channel as well when we record the videos and post them there. Um, there's a, for those who do sign in and give us your email address, we will send you the video, how to get started in multifamily is basically a free webinar video. And I also feel free to check me out at youtube.com, uh, um, Cardinals D. Reynoso on YouTube. Again, the summit, multifamily investor nation summit.com. Use my promo code Canis, save hundred dollars off the price of admission. And you guys, if you stick around till the end, we'll definitely have a, a quick chance to do some networking. And um, without further ado, let's jump straight into the topic. Today's topic, again, is asset management uh, duties or responsibilities after closing a multifamily deal. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brief through these uh, real quick, because what I want you guys to keep in mind is that 
these are things that basically the asset manager is doing. And uh, some of it, like I said, is a continuation of last month. And it's basically the same thing uh, in more detail today. So you want to capture what we said last month and add this part as well. So you want to notify your investors that you just closed on the property and you want to remind them what to expect, which by the way, you had already talked to them about this before because you've been keeping in contact with your investors as you're raising the capital for your deals. So you've already told them what they could be expecting from you, such things as uh, when you're going to have uh, the, the distributions, uh, you're going to be telling them you know, how often they could hear from you, uh, they could expect to, to be contacted by you, how they're going to be contacted by you. You know, like JJ just said, you know, you could send me an email or you could text me. And it's very important to find out how your investors would like to be contacted because if you're sending them emails and they just get too many emails per day, they might not be seeing your emails. So if in JJ's case, he said, you know, reach out to me via text. I'm going to definitely do that because it's probably going to be easier for him to respond to text than it would be to respond to email. And, uh, you know, again, you know, uh, remind them what, what they could expect and implement your business plan immediately. So you don't want to wait to, okay, we close today. We'll start first thing tomorrow morning. In my opinion, you close today, be there right after the closing. Show up to the property right after the closing. If the property happens to be out of state, have your asset manager be there. Have your property manager there. These are people that are going to have to be there um, regardless. You can have a property manager out of state for 240 units. So you definitely want them to be there right after the closing um, and implement the business plan immediately. Now, uh, you're going to want to get those weekly, monthly, and quarterly reviews that we spoke about in the last meetup um, with your property manager and your regional manager there um, together and tra track the progress of your KPIs, which are the key performance indicators, and make sure that, uh, that they're keeping track of everything, basically. And you always want to take care. Uh, the, the main thing you want to keep in mind and this is something Joe Fairless says, basically always take care of mom. And mom, in this case, is your money, occupancy, and management. And, you know, that is Joe Fairless's quote. Uh, now, within there, within the uh, money part, you have the gross potential income. So that's the income. If everybody paid their, their rent on time and everything was paid accordingly, um, that's the gross potential income that it would all add up to, right? But then you have um, the uh, gross occupied income and that's the actual income coming in. So in other words, let's say you're 95% occupied, but you got 1% of the people paying late. This is your gross occupied income, is the income that's actually coming in, excuse me, including your vacancies or late payments as well. And then you have your month to date collected income and how much collected this week, this month, or this quarter. And it just depends you know, how far into the property you are and uh, your last meeting as well. Now for the occupancy portion, how many units you have pre-leased? How many eviction notices do you have? How many total uh, eviction notices? Uh, the number of set out scheduled and set out scheduled is like, for instance, if you know they're going to be moving out in January, how many of those are there? And you want to make sure that you have enough people moving in to cover for the ones that are moving out. And again, this is what your asset manager is, is keeping uh, track of directly through the reports that the property manager hands them. And uh, make sure that the property manager is getting qualified leads so part of the reports in the lead conversions, it's going to show lead conversions. You want to see how many of those are actually um, uh, converting and how many of those, you know, people showed up, viewed and toured the property, but at the end, either A, didn't qualify 
or B, just didn't uh, uh, lease with you. And you want to make sure that they're getting the most qualified leads possible. And if not, you want to address the issue right away. Um, how many renewals? And there is something you could look on the uh, T12 or the, uh, the trailing 12 months and find out through there um, exactly um, how many of these renewals uh, are coming up uh, in the next 12 month period. Also, how many people are on the waiting list? Uh, for again, for the month, uh, uh, the week, the month, and the quarterly. And uh, bear with me for just a second here. Okay. And, uh, and then the management part, you want to know the number of units occupied this week, month, and quarter, total units occupied uh, for the prior week, month, and quarter, projected total number of occupied units, how many units are pre-leased. And again, if you know that the people are, are going to be moving out, definitely have uh, enough tenants moving in to cover that so that you have zero or uh, minimum vacancies. And the total at the end of the month of pre-leased, how many evictions filed, number of skips. For those who, who might not recognize the term, skips are basically people that uh, just get up and go. They don't give you a two months notice. They don't let you know that they're moving out. They basically get up in the middle of the night. So that's something else you'll see in the report. How many transfers? So transfers could be from, uh, let's say from a, uh, a classic unit to a renovated unit. Also, uh, how many units are vacant? And the number of vacant units, uh, of the vacant units, how many of those are rent ready and how many of those uh, still need to be rented out? Excuse me for a quick second. Thank you. All right, so the investor communications is the next uh, step here. And you wanna definitely uh, send investor distributions as you promised them. Now, some people do, most people do quarterly. Uh, there's a few groups, passive investing, the group that, that, uh, that we're referring to here and multifamily investor nation, they do monthly uh, distributions. And the, the reason why Dan usually explains it is because one, it's a great way to stay top of mind with your investors. If every month they go to their bank account and they see money trickling in that you're sending them, that's a great way to keep in contact with them. And two, because um, it's also a, a, a good way to stay top of mind with the investors and letting them know that, hey, look, this, these, these guys promised me monthly distributions and they're keeping uh, uh, their promises and they're definitely uh, providing what they said they would. And then part six is manage the renovations. And with the renovations, you're looking at interiors, exteriors, and the amenities. And um, real quick, I, I have a question here. Let me see if I could look into this here. Uh -huh. Okay, it was just a comment. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, one step back here. One step back. That's why I don't like going to the chat because now I got stuck here. Okay, here we are. So interiors, exteriors, and amenities. Uh, you want to renovate vacant units first. Okay, that's that's going to be the easiest, uh, you know, the the easiest fruit to pick. Then you want to offer the uh, once you're done with those. Okay, Ethan is showing up here. Just a moment. I'm gonna let him in. Uh, then once you're um, Yeah, once you're done with all the vacants and you've renovated all the vacant units, then you want to offer current residents an upgrade. And while you're offering them this upgrade, you're going to say, listen, we're going to charge you, uh, you know, we're, we're going to renovate your unit. We're going to make it beautiful with all the brand new bells and whistles, if you will, right? New appliances, new flooring, whatever. Uh, and if you choose to, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that for you, but we're going to have to increase the rents by $150. Now, the good thing about this method is that the $150, if you multiply that by 12, you're looking at approximately $1,800 extra per month, and that's going to go toward the actual renovations. 
but overall it's going to increase the property value uh, tremendously, depending on the cap rate and depending on on the the uh, the value of the unit. You're going to be increasing it the NOI tremendously. So that's a good method to use. And uh, the increase will pay for most of the renovations. If they like it, if they like the idea of being renovated, go ahead and do the, the, the renovations. And if not, you could do light renovations at no cost to them while they're still living in the unit. So that's another way. You can start off you know, from a classic unit who, that needs a lot of work and just end up doing just slight renovations while they're still the, te- the resident is still in the property. And then in the future, as they move out, you could finish doing the heavier uh, renovations. Uh, in worst case scenario, you could put them up at a hotel if major re- uh, uh, renovations are deemed necessary. Uh, obviously, that's going to be your last option because that's going to be one of your most expensive options. Uh, but, you know, like sometimes if the property is damaged uh, to a certain point, like uh, fire or anything hazardous like that, sometimes you don't have a choice. You're going to have to put them up in a hotel. Uh, the insurance a lot of times will cover that. Um, but yeah, that's something to keep in mind. So that is another option that you could use is you could put them up at a hotel while you renovate their unit. Um, and then obviously you could transfer them from one unit to the next as well uh, while you renovate one and put them up in a in a in an already renovated unit. And there's two ways that'll be funded, either through the capital you've already raised or the lender uh, will be the one providing the capital. And in that case, you wanna definitely make sure to keep the lender apprised of your progress at all times. And, you know, like I always say, the lender is your your partner on this deal. Always keep them informed. And as long as you do do that, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, Ask the property manager to give you weekly comp analysis. And the reason you want to do this weekly is because a lot of times um, the other units are going to be um, they're going to be doing concessions and they're going to be giving them concessions as far as, you know, uh, first rent, first month's rent is free or excuse me, or, um, you know, if you move in this month, uh, you'll save one hundred dollars off or whatever the concessions might be. So. And sometimes they, they even lower the price of the, of the rent itself. So that's why you want to do a market analysis, uh, uh, sorry, a property, um, a property analysis, uh, because that way you get to stay uh, up to date on exactly what's going on in your market. And then you also want to ask them to analyze your market. Uh, and de- you, know, you definitely want to do that yourself as well. Analyze the market for any changes in the market. Uh, any uh, new construction that might be moving in, um, uh, major renovations in the area, like other apartment buildings might be doing uh, full renovations. Um, and there might be major employers moving in. So you definitely want to keep top of mind with that and keep uh, keep informed. Uh, take monthly trips to the asset. Sometimes, you know, we buy these properties, like, like our properties in San Antonio, and you can't be going there every day, but the asset manager should be able to uh, to be at the property um, a frequent amount of time. And uh, you definitely wanna be there uh, more frequently during the renovations and make sure that, uh, that everything is going according to your business plan. Uh, track your vendors to avoid the cost from going up. The contract expires. Um, so, what happens is when the contract expires, they're going to want to uh, uh, offer you a higher rate. And if you continue the contract before it expires, then you're basically continuing the same contract so that you're not really giving them a chance to increase the pricing. And um, and the bonus tip, there's so much that could go wrong in, in multifamily. There's so many things that could happen that are out of our control. So the best thing that we can advise is expect the unexpected. Any and a number of things could happen unexpectedly. Do not freak out, <laughs> keep calm, handle it as it comes. And most importantly, notify your investors 
as appropriate. Let them know what you got going on. Let them know what happened. Let them know right away. Uh, don't delay, you know, sometimes you, you must delay because you're still trying to get um, all the information. But as soon as you got everything, go ahead and share it with them and let them know exactly uh, what's going on and be transparent with them at all times. All right, guys, so uh, here's my contact information. That's basically all I had for you guys today. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to um, to ask them now. I'll always you know, wait a little bit in case you guys have any questions. Uh, we did have someone else show up uh, later into the presentation. So if you wanna go ahead, Ethan, and introduce yourself, uh, go ahead and use this opportunity to do that as well. And if not, uh, we can always jump into the breakout rooms if you guys want to go there as well. I'll wait a second while you guys tell me what you want to do. All righty. So here you have my contact information. Again, you guys can reach me at uh, Facebook, Canis Major Investment Capital LLC. Um, you can reach me on my business site. Here, let me see if I can do this here. So this is what my business page looks like. Here's my latest posts. All right, so yeah, this is the information there.